if you were to survey 100 people on Penge High Street and ask them who was Lionel Atwell, you would probably find that 99 of them had never heard of them because he's largely forgotten by the general public these days. And yet he has a very large and loyal following among people who love the old horror films of the 1930s and 1940s. Lionel Atwell is best remembered for a series of horror films that he made in the 1930s and 40s, including The Mystery of the Wax Museum in 1933 and Son of Frankenstein in 1939. But before that, he had a very long career as a stage actor. His stage debut was in 1905 at the Garrick Theatre in Charing Cross Road. He had 10 successful years on the British stage. Then in 1916, he moved to America and had an even more successful career, 15 years on the Broadway stage. And in fact, he was the second most popular star on Broadway after the great John Barrymore. Then in 1931, he was finally lured to Hollywood on the West Coast and he had a successful 15 year career as a film actor. People who have never seen a Lionel Atwell film may be surprised to know that they've quite probably seen a performance based on one of his roles. In Mel Brooks's comedy Young Frankenstein, which as I'm recording this is actually on at the Garrick Theatre in London, there is a character of a slightly insane police inspector with a false arm. And this character is based directly on a character played by Lionel Atwell in Son of Frankenstein. In 1939. There's a key scene in which Baron Frankenstein, played by Basil Rathbone, says to Inspector Krogh, the Atwell character, he asks him, did you ever encounter the monster? And Inspector Krogh replies, the most vivid recollection of my life. And then he slams his false arm into a wooden beam and says, one doesn't easily forget, Herr Baron, an arm torn out by the roots. So what are Lionel Atwill's connections with Penge? He was born in 1885 in South Norwood, but at the age of five, his family moved to number 54 Leonard Road. He lived here with his parents and his three brothers, Clarence, Stanley and Herbert. What marvellous Victorian names they all had. After living at 54 Leonard Road, the Atwell family moved, but they didn't move far. They just moved 200 yards down the road to number 91, which is over my shoulder now, which as you can see, very large semi-detached Victorian house. So clearly the Atwell family were doing well. After living at number 91 Leonard Road for five years, the Atwell family moved again, just 100 yards away to number 86 Leonard Road, which is behind me now. Again, it's quite a substantial prestigious Victorian house probably built around the 1880s. So the family were clearly prospering, the father was uh, earning more and it may even be that Lionel was earning sufficient money as an actor now to be able to contribute to the household. All of Lionel Atwell's 70 films have survived and they're available to watch on DVD or for free on YouTube and I'm going to recommend four of them. First of all, I recommend a film called The Song of Songs, made in 1933, in which Lionel Atwell co-starred with the great Marlena Dietrich. She played an innocent country girl, and he played a nasty old baron twice her age who wants to marry her. And the character that he plays is a bully, a brute, a drunkard, and a lecher, and he plays it absolutely marvellously. Another film that I would recommend people to watch is a horror film which Atwell made in 1933 called The Mystery of the Wax Museum in which he plays a mad sculptor who owns a wax museum and at the climax of the film he abducts Fay Ray with the intention of covering her in molten wax. She tries to fight him off, batters at his face and as she does so his face starts to crack. It isn't a face at all, it's a wax mask and it reveals underneath it what he really looks like and how his face has been horribly scarred in a fire. And if you want to know what that horribly scarred face looks like, here it is. On the cover of a magazine with the rather wonderful title, 
Famous Monsters of Filmland. A third film which I strongly recommend you to watch is Captain Blood, made in 1935 and starring Errol Flynn. In this one, Atwell plays Colonel Bishop, who is the sadistic owner of a West Indies plantation, and he enjoys nothing more than whipping his slaves and branding them with a hot iron, and he tries to do the same to Errol Flynn as well. And a fourth film, which uh, is essential viewing if you want to uh, get an idea of Lionel Atwell at his best, is Son of Frankenstein, which I mentioned briefly earlier, but it is Lionel Atwell at his best as the hate-filled, one-armed Inspector Krogh. But as well as all these wonderful villainous roles in horror films, it's important to remember that he had a very extensive career before being typecast as villains. He was on the stage for 25 years and he played a whole range of different parts. He could do light comedy, he could play the, the romantic lover, he, he could do it all basically. And he was a huge success on Broadway. His greatest triumph on Broadway was a play called De Bureau, originally written in French but translated for American audiences. And in it he played an actor who is so distraught when his lover cheats on him that he becomes a completely broken down man. And the critics absolutely went crazy about it, and as did the public. And it was on stage for over a year. And yet today, completely forgotten about. But it's, it's a charming play. You can, you can still get hold of copies of it, and it's, I, I recommend reading it. But it hasn't been performed anywhere for 70 years at least. It was a hugely successful career on stage and films for over 40 years and accompanying through these 40 years were f a series of four different wives. His third wife was Louise Cromwell, who had previously married General Douglas MacArthur, the hero of World War I and World War II. And she once quipped to a newspaper reporter that she had swapped her four-star general for one big Hollywood star. Lionel Atwell had a terrific career, 25 successful years on the stage, 10 years as a, as a highly regarded screen villain, earning lots of money, but then it all started to go badly wrong for him in the early 1940s. He got dragged into somebody else's court case, and as soon as his name hit the headlines, the press had a field day. There were allegations of wild parties held at the Atwell household, and to protect the identities of some of his friends who had attended these alleged wild parties, Atwell denied that they had taken place. Unfortunately, subsequently came out that he had lied in court, which is perjury, a serious offence. He was dragged back into court, accused of perjury and charged with that crime. And the judge asked him, he said, Mr Atwell, why did you lie in court? And Lionel Atwell said probably one of the best lines of his entire career. He pulled himself up, took a deep breath and said, I lied like a gentleman to protect my friends. But unfortunately, the judge wasn't impressed. Atwell was, became a convicted felon, and in Hollywood, if you're a convicted felon, there's an unwritten rule, you don't get any work. And it was a huge fall from grace for Lionel Atwell. He did manage to recover slightly, appeared in a number of low-budget horror films after that, but it was a, a long way from uh, his glory days in the 30s and before that on stage in the, in the 1920s. If you want to know more about the court case and how it harmed Atwell's career, the information is available in the biography of him that I've written. Here he is, Lionel Atwell, the exquisite villain.